Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you on a lighter note today. Um, I just wanted to add my two cents into the revved up discussion about who's capable to stand on the stage in a versus battle with Jay-Z. Um, Jay-Z uh, made the statement that nobody could stand on nobody wants to stand on that stage or could stand on that stage something to that effect and it has popped off uh, a fire debate and everybody's talking about it i want to kind of talk about it from uh an informed perspective an, a perspective from which you can sort of measure a lot of things when we start talking about the goat when we start talking about uh, who's the best, who's the greatest in, in any particular situation, uh, it normally uh, boils down to subjectivity, meaning how a person particularly feels or sees or, or, or observes and, and, and senses and interprets something. And when you're talking about anything, for instance, the conversation of whether or not uh, LeBron James has transcended Michael Jordan as the GOAT, um, 99% of that conversation is based on subjectivity, meaning that how a person views the game, sees the game, interprets the game, uh, how much weight they give to the evolution of the game and how the game is played compared to how the game was played when Michael Jordan uh, was in the league. And all of that is, again, open to interpretation. It is subjective in nature it cannot be objectified it cannot be quantified there are no points because everybody sees it differently and gives different what most of those arguments are more about how much i can tear your guy down to make my guy look better instead of subjectivity i don't enter the discussion because of that very fact when i measure it i have my my selection and it's simply on what can i measure who is the most celebrated meaning that the, the most awards by peers, by, by a recognized body, who has the most awards, who has the most trophies, not just in championships, but in things that are represented as an accolade in the sport. You can measure that. You can count that. You can see the impact. And that's how I, how I, how I uh, did that. Uh, you know, and when it comes down to the versus battle, uh, and everybody's saying nobody can stand on the stage. Everybody's talking about this guy's better than Jay-Z. That guy's better than Jay-Z. And first thing it tells me is you really don't truly under the, understand the concept of the versus battle. The versus battle isn't determined by who is the best vocalist, who is the best producer. We've had, we've had producers. We've had vocalists. We've had other rappers. It's not about who's the best. It's about whose catalog is the most relevant whose catalog can uh, have the most impact. In other words, when you put a catalog on the table and you start to play the songs, whose songs are going to be most uh, recognizable, whose songs are going to get the most, oh, wow, I remember. Uh, uh, who, you know, in other words, there's a level of relevance. And see, when you start talking about who's the greatest uh MC or who's the greatest rapper and you know there's a difference uh, you start talking about that you're talking about it from your perspective how you saw life in, in viewing this person and a lot of that can be I just don't like the guy so I interpret his music differently or it can be like I just love this guy's swag so I interpret his music differently and if you start that uh, what you have to do is you have to look at it so when you when, when you talk about it there when you talk about hip-hop Rap is simply one arm of hip hop. It is not hip hop in its totality. Hip hop uh, was birthed literally out of the uh, need to fill the void that was created when COINTELPRO destroyed the Black Nationalist Party and the Black Panther Party. It was a new way of educating, a new way of speaking power, a new way of communicating, and it was done in a number of different ways. The, uh, the language is hip hop. You know, how you took something like dope and bad and made it good and, and hype, you know, dope, fly, uh, all of those different 
terminologies was a part of it, but it transcended music, it transcended rapping, it was poetry, it was the songs, it was the clothing, it was the communication, it was the mindset. And so when you start talking about hip hop, you have to understand that rap, first of all, is simply an arm of hip hop, one component of it, a very powerful component, and at one time a very influential, a positively influential component that was usurped and hijacked and has never been the same. And you have to look and ask yourself when you start talking about Jay-Z, what did he fall in this? But you also have to understand the craft. The craft of being an MC or the craft of being a rapper goes far beyond who's the best lyricist. Uh, when you start talking about rap, you're talking about a number of different elements and components. And uh, one of the people that's recognized right now uh, and, and, and many people consider to be the GOAT. Uh, I don't, but he's definitely in my top four, and that's Tupac. It's because Tupac probably wasn't the best at any of them, but he had uh, the unbelievable gift of being good at all of them. Uh, and when I talk about all of them, I'm talking about the elements and components of being an MC or, an, or a rap artist. I'm talking about uh, being, a, being a lyricist. I'm talking about... Um, uh, lyrical structure uh, and Pac was literally a poet so the, his ability to put things together uh, that way uh, is hardly rivaled uh, you're talking about delivery you're talking about storytelling you're talking about cadence you're talking about variance uh, you're talking about a, a bunch of other different things if you're looking at live performances like stage presence charisma um, and flow uh, all of those things are and more are a part of how you judge an MC. So it's not just who's the best lyricist. You can get a good rhymer. This is why uh, Eminem is not in my top five. When everybody starts talking about Emma Slay, M is a good rhymer. He's a good lyricist. He can put words together. But how relevant is his music to hip hop? How relevant is his music to the life of the people that hip hop was designed for? Um, who, who, who is his predominant fan base? Uh, all of those things come into meta. And, you know, how many of those things, storytelling, presentation, delivery, flow, all those things, uh, does he master all at once? Or is he just a great lyricist? I'm not here to tear anybody down, so I'm not going to go off into detail. I listen to him. I, I have his music, so it's not a hating thing. I just don't put him in my top five. I think there were far too many people who were relevant at a level. And master things you're talking about big the only reason we're not even mentioning big in this is uh catalog wasn't big enough um you know and there's some other cats jada immortal technique uh gemstones uh big pun a lot of other people who were sick lyricists delivery everything else catalog just isn't deep enough and here's where you have the problem when you comes to jay-z Jay-Z's catalog is immensely extensive. And here's how the verses works. Is okay, you have your A side, your your I mean your stuff that was just number one on the chart. Just say that. So when Jay starts playing his number ones, who's gonna keep up? Then when you sit up and say, okay, go to the B side, the stuff that the average person would know, but you put it on and everybody knows it. You know, how much stuff that Jay puts on and then you hear it playing in places that hardly we as a group go into, but the people know it. Uh, how many people are referencing lines off of, his, off of this particular song that long after the song has been gone? Uh, that's called, you know, cultural uh, relevance, cultural significance, the impact of a song long, long outside of how long it was on the charts. And so in essence, when you talk about this, People are measuring this in a simple manner. You know, how people are responding on the, on the threads, how people are responding on Twitter, how people are responding on Instagram, uh, what's happening in the live audience, all of these different things. But uh, uh, when you look at the depth of it, is how many people know that song? How relevant is that song to them? You know, you know when you start talking about a bunch of his songs, you could have been a cat that didn't like him, but it was certain songs that was coming on and it was popping. Uh, and then you got to stop pretending that this dude didn't hold the game down from reasonable doubt to the black album. A lot of the cats, a lot of people that are putting their favorite app, uh, their favorite rapper on the stage with Jay 
doesn't realize that their favorite rapper became their favorite rapper because Jay let them get on his album. Uh, that's how significant he was. That's how culturally relevant he was. Now, I'm not one to sit up and say that there's nobody that can get on the stage. But you got to have a catalog that's extensive enough that you can pull songs from it on at, at the rate that they're pulling them and say, okay, yeah, that one going, that one, oh, I remember this, I remember this. You got, first and foremost, when I think about cats with extensive um, catalogs, first one that comes to mind is LL Cool J. Uh, dude doesn't get the credit that he deserves because of a lot of the stuff he did as far as love songs and uh, charisma and the, the, the significance of his fan base and how many women make up uh, a large portion of his fan base. Um, but dude had some very hardcore stuff on his albums. He literally probably has one of the top five ever freestyles in the basement ever. Uh, but he has the catalog over 20 albums uh, so he can keep up with Jay. Jay has over 20. He has over 20. And he has the staying power where he was relevant from the early 80s into deep into the 2000s. Um, and he started focusing more and more and more on his acting career, but literally dropping albums well into the 2000s that made... Uh, made had impact had songs that was popping in the club that that you could say okay dude is still out there doing it he has that so he has that um you know how it will hold up and the difference in age and whatever it's not that big of a difference in age he was just out earlier than jay like i said this dude was on on the set at 15 and 16. so that's one person that you have to look at the next person is tupac Unfortunately, Tupac is deceased, so he couldn't be on the stage. But if you're talking about catalogs, you're talking about the person who is still the highest selling um, rap artist of all time, 25 years after he died. He is still the number one all time selling rap artist. Um, so his catalog is mad crazy. And when it comes to relevance and hearing his song and people recognizing him, that is second to none. Okay, so then you move that off. One thing, one person I think that absolutely gets overlooked, and to me, he's on my goat sheet, and that's Scarface. Catalog sick, skills sick, and every time he stood on the stage and been on Jay's stuff, he's held, not only held his own, uh, most people who really are deeply off into this says he killed it. And I, I'm with that. And I mean, the dude does it without a lot of bravado. He he knows he's sick. If you talk to him, he going to tell you he's sick. But you don't hear him running around saying it a whole lot. He just simply knows. And he's that dude. He's probably the, one of the best storytellers. Maybe Pac may be uh, on that level. But there ain't too many more storytellers. Slick Rick, but he doesn't have the catalog. I mean, you know, you got people out there that can do a bunch of stuff. You're talking about just pure MCs. Rock him, without a doubt. Dude didn't put in, he didn't even put out 10 albums, though. Nope, not a deep enough catalog. So, you, you, you got all this, you got, you know, uh, so many different things that you have to look at in, in, in the way of uh, how you want to judge this. You're talking about rappers, you're talking about MCs, you're talking about pure lyricists. But none of that stuff is what the verses is really about. The verse is about putting somebody on and you hearing a song and going, yeah, yeah. It's about catalog. It's not necessarily about who's the best vocalist when you've got two singers on there. It's about who brought the vibe the hardest, who had it hitting the hardest, you know. Um, and it, it, it's that type of thing, you know. And so when I look at this, do, do I think that Jay had a right to say what he said? I think anybody at that level has a certain bravado about them. And I think that that comes with that. I know that being a former athlete, that you can't step on the track and think the person, anybody else on the track is better than you if you are, you're already lost. It doesn't matter if they actually have a faster time. and they've. It doesn't even matter that you've never beaten them. You've got to feel you're better than they are that day, or you don't even need to get on the track. And it's the same way with anything in life. If you're feeling like, hey, man, I, I, I'm, I'm holding down that number one spot, then you have to say it, and then you got to make somebody come push you off of it. And 
what I think is a lot of people are looking at style. I think a lot of people are looking at uh, lyricism. Uh, you know, you got Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole. You got a bunch of people who are great lyricists. But if I look at lyricists, I go to uh, people who were more potent underground. Jada Kiss, uh, Biggie, uh, Gemstones, Locksmith, Black Thought, um, Papoose. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, Immortal Technique, those p big pun. I mean, p people who just like spit lyric after lyric after lyric and make you go, what the heck? And, you know, those people, as far as lyricists, um, are mad sick. Catalog, though. They can't go toe to toe with Jay because the stuff will be playing and people can't sing along with it. That's the, that's the versus thing. It's, man, you know, how many people can sing along with it? How many people know the lyrics? That's the problem. Name the person that you can put up there that literally their stuff is coming on a song for song with this dude and people know the lyrics. And then here's this problem. Uh, that, that, uh, uh, that's one of the songs on uh, LL's joint that dropped I want to say in 2000 called The Goat it was actually called The Goat uh, and there's a point in there where he's saying you bought that N words album but he bought all mine that's when you start talking about relevance and the fact of the matter is when he was saying that he was probably right Cats were buying his albums capsules on it and Rakim will even admit that when Jay was coming up his first big uh big breakout was being on tour with LL and so LL has that relevance and you got to ask yourself how many cats that people are putting up to say that they can go toe to toe with Jay that was actually buying Jay's albums that was begging to be on uh, Jay's albums knowing what that would do because people were buying Jay's albums and so, yes, it is a part of commercialism. It is a part of marketing. It is not about who's the best rapper. It is not about who's the best MC, because we probably wouldn't be jamming as hard on a versus if it was just about pure, unadulterated power as far as an MC or a rapper, because most of you don't know them. And so what you have to understand is all of this is commercial. So, yes, Joe, uh, Jay's ability to move in the commercial spectrum. like And people are like, man, what about Nas? MC-wise, Nas is a guy. Um, you know, there are a few that you put ahead of him, starting with Rakim. And, you know, you, you start from that. Nas is just that sick. But Nas doesn't have the catalog. And Nas's relevance in a consistent pattern you know i mean head to head Nas's ether killed jay-z but it had no impact on his career that's something else about ll ll went up against some hell of a lyricist from back in the uh, early days with his battles with modi all the way up to cannabis and everybody in between you could argue that every person that went against was a better lyricist than him but there was something about his relevance. There was something about his delivery. There was something about his staying power that he literally shut careers down. People, people stopped buying that crap. I mean, I don't want to call that crap because those are good MCs. Cannabis was a beast. But, you know, he found a way to get on, J, I mean, on LL's wrong side. And from what I understand about it all, it was a misunderstanding. L's ego got in the way and he decided that Cadmus was a problem and he did something I think was kind of shady. He took Cannabis's verse off the album and then redid his verse to take shots at Cannabis. And then P Cannabis let people hype him up and they went at it. And it was good for a minute. But L kept dropping albums and Cannabis disappeared. That's what happens. And so you look at all those things. It's a bunch of things that you can look at. And you can sit them and say, man, I didn't think about it that way. You know, are there better lyricists out there than Jay-Z? Hell yeah. But let's not act like dude was just not 
like like he was just average. We we can't do that. We can't act like he was average. We can't act like this dude was sick. This dude's wordplay and his metaphorical prowess was was that. It was all that. You know, that was a point. I think it's on one of the Blueprint albums. I can't remember which one, but it's on, on one of the Blueprint albums. Where, uh, I think the song is Threats. And this dude is talking about uh, your garage is like a, a parking lot for bullets. Please don't make me park it. Valet a couple of strays. Some stuff like that. But I mean, just the thought. Of, what were you doing when you wrote that? And that was the other thing about Jay. He didn't write. Everything came in his head. He remembered it. Uh, Guru, the uh, studio engineer, always said, first take. Stuff like that gets out and, it's, and it becomes legendary. It becomes a part of the folklore. It becomes part of the mystique. Dude had this unbelievable memory, showed up, no paper, just killed it. When it comes to work ethic, everybody agrees nobody was in the studio more than Pac. And so you got, that's why you were dropping songs and albums years after dude's dead because he didn't already recorded them. That, that type of thing is what's part of the lore, what's part of the legend. You know, I don't take anything from uh, some, of the, some of the cats that's been named, you know, Buster. Buster is a beast in his own right. He's so unique that it's hard to find somebody that you can put on the stage because everybody's talking about Buster. Buster doesn't have a catalog. Uh, can Buster hold his own? Can Buster spit? <laughs> Nobody has to ask. The, anybody has to ask that question. Shouldn't even be having this conversation. Problem is, he doesn't have the catalog. And energy is different. It, it, it wouldn't flow well. It wouldn't be as entertaining because it, it, it would be so different. Uh, I think that the person that would have been best on stage with Buster left us this year, and that's DMX. That's where I would have wanted to see that, is uh, Buster and DMX. You know, and, and that, that's some other talk about a couple other people. But again, you got to have the catalog. M has released a, a lot of albums, but how many songs are real? How many, how many people can name 20 songs that M did? That's the thing that I'm talking about. Dude, it, 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 it's sick with it. I'm not going to take anything from it. I'm not one of the people that said nobody would even be saying anything if he, if he weren't white. No, he can spit. Um, I don't think that Dre would have picked him up if he couldn't. But I also think that he was able to get into this by being co-signed by Dre. And I think it gave him a path that other white boys that came before him didn't get. And so he's taking it. He's did what he did. He's making money in this. Through him, we got 50 Cent. Um, and the whole G-Unit G experience, which was dominating 2002 uh, to about 2008, 2009. Um, you know, it's understanding this whole game. Um you know, I'm glad to sit up and actually talk about something. I ain't got somebody dying or somebody hurting somebody or somebody stealing something or somebody whining and crying. There are some beautiful things we created. Am I happy with where hip hop is right now? Absolutely not. I think that we have to learn how to protect the things that are valuable to us, things that belong to us. I think we have to learn how to keep people out who don't belong. I think that we have to learn how to make our own power and learn if somebody's gonna come in and give me a million dollars from something i'm guaranteed to understand it's worth more than a million dollars so i'm gonna find out how i can hold that value and still get done what i need to get done and we haven't learned that yet not just in the music industry but in so many other ways we are ready to create sale and we take the black wealth we build in something and we pass it on to uh, pass it outside of the community for the sake of having something um, of our own and i get it if you never had it and it's a chance to hold it, you want it. But I, I, I would much rather have the source than a fraction of what the source is capable of producing because it's more than I've seen at any time. It takes discipline to pass on that. I get it. But we've, we've got to do better. But yeah, man, in this whole Jay-Z thing, I think that to act like dude didn't hold it down from reasonable doubt uh, that Dynasty al album was dope. Reasonable Doubt, 
both Blueprint albums, um, and 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 so much more. I think that we're not being fair to the greatness of Jay Z when we sit up and act like man that he doesn't even belong in the discussion. Um, but you know, I don't expect him to say anything. But nobody can get on the stage with me. You know, I mean, it's the same thing Faith said on the Breakfast Club. Nobody can get on that stage with me. That's what Faith said, and he and he followed it up with the truth. He said, "Have you heard my catalog?" And most people haven't. Most people who aren't tr real true hip hop heads don't even realize Faith has multiple albums. Dude goes deep. If you take Faces multiple albums as a solo artist and you put them with the ghetto boys and then you pull his his verses the dude is a problem dude is a problem and so you know you could talk about that you could talk about like i said you know depending on how you pull but i think everybody sleeps on l but uncle l been doing it for a minute and if you notice None of the heads that everybody talk about that has uh, sustained their careers take shots at dude. There's a reason for that. And so, you know, like I said, you know, having grew up on this stuff, you know, I grew up in the 70s, uh, came into adulthood in the 80s. So I grew up on this stuff. I grew up when it was in its infancy before it hit commercialism. Um, you know, I, I got a chance to be around some people who were talking about what was popping off in NY and share some things. And then, um, I mean, late seventies, early eighties, here comes rapper's delight and the world was like, wow. And I remember when they were saying, this is a fad, it won't last long. And then you, you, you heard, you, you had cool hurt and, um, Africa Bombada and, and 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 Grandmaster Flash and Curtis Blow and all these and then these dudes out of Queens pop down Ron DMC, who happened to be uh, who who's one of the members happened to be the little brother of Russell Simmons, who was you know transitioning from street money to legit money and turned it commercial and I mean literally introduced a culture to the world and watched it grow up and then you had cats like KRS-One probably one of the purest of the MCs and I don't think anybody wants to go toe to toe on a battle with this dude um, that that dude KRS-One uh, rest in peace Scott LaRock and I mean, you can go down the line and you talk about all this, all these cats that nobody's talking about anymore. You know, groups like the S X Clan. Man, uh, one of the one of the dudes that I think was underrated as a floor, Heavy D, Ricky D, um, Dana Dane. You know, and, and, and I mean, you just go down the line of cats, man, that still have relevance because of the impact that they had on the game years and years and years ago. And you have to understand it all to get an appreciation of where it goes. I know that we are talking from what we know about what happened in the 2000s and the 2010s and now we're in the 2020s. Uh, but there's so much more to this thing. And I think because of where Jay came from, it's a lot of people don't understand the impact that he had not, you know, not just as an artist, but on the game, period. And I think that having lived through it all and watched how it evolved, because he wasn't my favorite rapper. Um, you know, even after Reasonable Doubt, I'm like, okay, dude's good. But, you know, but then eventually you just have to sit up and listen to it and go, okay. I can respect it. Okay, I get it. Um, and so understand the concept I guess is the short uh, the, of it. Understand the concept of a versus battle. A versus battle is not about who's the best because that's subjective. Every person has an idea of what they like it. And everybody's arguing, well, this dude can't do this because you see it different. You're looking at it through your lens. That's why you call it subjective. 
uh, it's hard to objectify something that can be interpreted by each individual differently. So the discussion is subjective on that level. What can't be subjective is how many how many songs does each individual artist have that the most people will recognize when it starts to play. And it will actually be, in many instances, some of the stuff that may not have been their best lyrical work or their best delivery work. It's not about that. It's about, man, I remember this. You know, it, it, it brings back something. It makes you feel something. It takes you back, and you find yourself moving in your chair. And you can't, you can't stop when you're starting to think, and you're thinking about that honey you ran into when this was out. You think about that, 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 uh, that dude that was standing at the bar when you was at the club, and he gave you that eye, and y'all jumped off. That kind of stuff is what verses is about. It's about taking you back. It's about saying, man, I didn't know that was theirs. I didn't know that was theirs. You know, it's like. Uh, vocally, R. Kelly isn't the best. But catalog, songs written and performed by him, songs written for other people by him, songs produced. The only one that I can think of, and I, that could be someone else, but I can't think of him, the only one that has a catalog that can compete with R. Kelly is Stevie Wonder. The problem with that is the fans that would know Stevie's music outside of real true musical fans who literally listen to everything, every genre, uh, like myself, most of Stevie's fan, well, the ad advantage Stevie may have had died 15 years ago, and it has been dying ever since, meaning they just simply uh, died. And the other problem with that would be that R. Kelly has some of Stevie's fans. There are some people in their 60s and 70s that get with some of R's music. Definitely 50s. A bunch of people in their 50s had babies to R. Kelly's music. And so, he, I mean, obviously that, you know, while one has an equally extensive or maybe even greater uh, catalog, the catalog isn't as relevant now because most of the people who are familiar with it are no longer with us. All of these things have to be considered when you're talking about a versus. And I think that's what most people are missing is that it's not just about who you think is the best. It's about when that song pops off, how many people are going to know it and relate to it in a way that they, you know, yeah, you know, to get hype. And the whole thing is actually to play songs from both sides that keep people going, man, man, man. That's the thing that you want to see happen on a versus battle. Um, and you know, and obviously you get some bravado play, some stage play, some back and forth, but ultimately it's that type of thing. And I think that um, there are some people that can get on that stage with dude. Uh, so I'm not buying that nobody can get on the stage, but it ain't that many. It's definitely not as many as I see names getting dropped out there. Um, because your favorite rapper is, his favorite rapper is probably Jay. <laughs> and, you know, or one of the other people I mentioned. Uh, it just is, it's, it's the way it is. And like I said, um, I, I'm not going to call on who is something based off of, well, I'm not going to have a debate. Now, if I'm sitting around talking to my boys and we're talking about, you know, man, who's the greatest, I think that most of the people I sit down with, we're pretty much all on the same page. Um, and, you know, there's always that one person that steps out, but almost everybody that I talk to, and plus a lot of people that I talk to are some way and somehow uh, familiar with the industry or was actually a part of it at some point. And so we kind of see things differently. But, um, you know, a lot of the people I hang around um, are probably going to say face. Um, and, uh, and, and it's not just because I'm from the South, because I spent a lot of time and why I spent a lot of time uh, in, the, in, the, in the Northeast, um, especially during my 
uh, early adult developmental years in my 20s, um, then again in my 30s. But so um, it's not that. And a lot of the people that I'm talking about are from NY. Uh, so it's not just, okay, he's from the South, so he's going to say face. No. Because um, you got some cats down in the South that'll say something different. Ain't too many of them going to say it in Houston. Uh, but it's some other people that that that's that that got you know uh, have some impact. But man, it's a lot of cats that can flow from the south. But it, it is what it is. Look, that was just me dropping in my two cents. That's all it is. It's two cents. Uh, but I want to kind of come from my perspective of how I see things and how I view music. I come from a musical family. Spent a few years dabbling in the musical industry. Um, and actually walked away from Odyssey Entertainment. That's that's how I walked into the Odyssey Project, in case nobody doesn't know. If you go look at some of my old pictures on Facebook, you'll see it says, uh, before the transformation, uh, and it's me doing what I did back then. And that was just a part of my thing of when you're successful and you have resources, you do things you always wanted to do, whether it was what you were meant to do or not. And... Um, you know, so uh, I, like I said, I, but I grew up in a musical family. My brother right now is a recording artist, gospel recording artist, one of the best drummers on the planet. His son right now is uh, the uh, featured drummer uh, for rapper out of Houston, Toby. I can never say his last name, last name, but Toby Iwigway or something in Iwigway or something like that. Uh, but my nephew, my brother's, uh, he's he's the drummer for that dude. My my brother has drummed from everybody, from Juvenile, Kyle Turner, Genuine, a bunch of others. Plus, like I say, he's got four or five albums of his own. Uh, my my mom was a gospel recording artist um, from from the seventies and eighties. Um, I was actually on a couple of albums back in the eighties myself. Um, so I've been I've been around this. So I see music different. I hear music different. That's why I can have an appreciation for the stuff that Stevie Wonder did. Genius, absolutely genius. Uh, for the purity of voices of people like Marvin Gaye and Donny Hathaway, uh, Luther Vandross, Joe Thomas, who is immensely underrated, uh, superb vocalist, um, and you know, and on and on. But anyway. That is my two cents. Feel free to weigh in. Um, I'm pretty sure people are going to give me the business. But that's my two cents. Uh, I had fun doing it. Uh, again, for those of you who celebrate Christmas, no judgment. Enjoy yourself. Um, I'm going to spend time and love on my family. I'm not a Christmas person, but I'm a family person. And I don't put pressure on my family to uh, accept what I stand on. I love my family. I'm going to have a ball. I'm eating all the damn food. Um, and do what you do. Love on one another. We're about to transition uh, into another year. That's a transition phase, whether you're looking at uh, the calendar year, looking at the um, solar year, however you're looking at it, you still have a transition because mentally you're moving from one ending to a new beginning and psychologically spiritually emotionally there's a transition happening transition as possible as positively as you can transition uh with a focus on what you plan on doing don't wait until you start the new year to start something new uh to change behaviors and functions do what's necessary now that is my advice to you on that note i'm out here don't forget if you like the work we're doing on uh, or at the Odyssey Project, um, then, man, it's been a while. I mean, I'm just sitting up and I'm actually thinking. The Odyssey Project and Odyssey Media Group used to be Odyssey Entertainment. Wow. Everybody grows up. Man, God is good. Anyway, if you like the work we're doing um, in all of our projects, in our research center, Black Men Lead, Rite of Passage Program, Restoring Ghettos, Forgotten Daughters, and all that, go to the description box and look at how you can support the work we do. And on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Thanks for listening. 
uh, to me ramble about something I absolutely love. I'm not really happy with where we're at with it now, but I absolutely love it. Uh, it's a part of who we are. It's a part of our history. We need to learn it and learn more about it. And I'm going to have, we're going to have somebody on who is a friend of mine, a colleague of mine, a fellow activist, a fellow journalist, uh, but also a hip hop head. Uh, she has been a journalist and interviewed and knows a bunch of the people that we've talked about today and so many more. And we sit up and we talk forever about this crap. But I'm going to have her on, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on the 15th of January. She's going to be our second show back for the teachers. And we're going to talk about everything from politics to hip hop uh to what's going on, the need for black media. She is a big force behind what we're doing with all black news, all black media, uh, which is an arm of and a part of the new black media movement. It's her brainchild. We've been working on it for years. Neota Yura, uh, get ready. I'm talking about just get ready. Um, we're doing things, man. We're not sitting around just talking. We're doing things. Um, and... On that note, I'm going to get ready to get off of you guys. Have an unbelievable weekend. If you don't hear from me again, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be back on here. If not today, uh, tomorrow, you probably won't hear from me on Christmas Day because I'm going to be busy getting on everybody's nerves one way or another doing what I do. My wife often talks about and laughs about the fact. She says, like, if they really knew just how crazy you were it would totally blow their mind because everybody thinks you're so serious and the truth of the matter is i'm not i'm serious about the things that i deal with with you guys so all you see is that side of me but i'm the clown in the house i'm the one always wreaking havoc in the house uh i just decided a long time ago when i had kids that the only way for kids not to get on your nerves is for you to get on their nerves first so it's all I'm one I'm on ten. I'm getting on I'm messing with everybody. I'm filming kids. I got this one daughter. She's real good at catching you slipping with that camera. So with me and her it's on. No holes barred. Let me catch you slipping. That hair all over your head. Gotcha. You know, so I mean it's all that stuff. So I'm about to get off of here. But you know, thanks for sharing time with me and let me ramble on and share a little bit of me with you. Gotcha.